Okay, so I'm going to show you today the um, new version of AG WebView and the fully integrated graph in AG WebView on top of a Lego graph. So I can go to uh, AG WebView like I always do. So I have a Lego graph running on a server uh, at a company and I'm here sitting at home <laughs> going to that server in the browser. Um, let me log in. And so now I'm in AG Web Fruit View uh, test release number 15. Uh, what you see here is a new look for people that are already familiar with AG Web View. Here you now have the catalogs. I'm in the root, but there's some other catalogs that I use. And here's already some of the repositories that I've built. And I can just go to one of these. So let's be just for fun go to Dutch Tax New. And so I'm in this uh, database um, and here are all the options that I can use to manage the database. But for now, let me just show you how when I'm in this view, I can actually click on this icon here and I go directly into graph. Yeah. So for many of the people listening in, you've always started up your graph on Linux or on Windows or on the Mac. Um, but we had so many requests to make it a browser-based version that we ported the whole thing to uh, HTML5. So let me just hit the F11 button. And now you hardly can even see that this is a browser application. It looks almost completely identical to the regular uh, um, Windows-based graph. Okay, so now I'm also already directly in the new, uh, in the Dutch text new demo. Of course, I still can click file and I can go to other databases that I have, but the cool thing is I'm in HWebView, I'm in a particular database, click the graph button and there I am. And I can do queries, so I can go to the query view. Uh, let's get a, a, a graphical query in. So this is a query I've demonstrated many times to find a particular uh, influence network and I can run the query and I get an automatically written Sparkle query. I get my results and I can create a visual graph out of this. And just like anything in graph, I can delete something. I can do my tree-based layout and um, I could click on say a particular person. And here we have the tab view and I can go back to the browser. I can click on this guy here and I got this. And so literally everything works the same in this particular uh, version of graph in the browser. Okay, and then if I wanna get out of that, I hit the F11 button again, I'm back in the browser and I just click the button here and it's uh, gone. We are back in Allegro Graph WebView and let me show you some more things that you can do with Allegro Graph WebView. So we go here. And uh, I have a database healthcare, so let me just delete that one. So now it's deleted. Now uh, note that I'm going to uh, work with this, uh, what we call the healthcare data set, which is freely available on our website. So if you want to play with that, just go to the graph download page and there you'll find the healthcare data set. But for now, let me see how you do all of this. So I'm here and I type in healthcare. So now I create a database and uh, I have zero statements in the database. So let's load some data. I, um, I say import RDF from a server side file. I click on that and I already have here somewhere the healthcare data set. So here is it. Note that it's a GC file, but um, Allegro Graph will still guess that it's an NT file, an NTRIPLES file. And I want it, and it's about 13 million triples, so I don't want to load it as a transactional, but I want to use AG load, meaning an, an, a, a Linux uh, a program to use multiple threads to download the data. And I want to load it in bulk node, so I've done that. And if I wanted to, I could say how many processes I want to use to load the data. 
and then I click OK. Okay, so now I loaded all the triples for healthcare in, in Lego Graph. Um, and then we use AG WebView to basically manage your, your repository. So there's lots of things you can do, and I'll just go through some of the functionality. Uh, obviously, if you sometimes you want triples, so you can just say a few triples, and here you get some of the triples in the database. Obviously, um, I can go back. Uh, and I could say, well, what are the uh, uh, classes in the database? So I click here and I get uh, all, the, all the classes in the database. I could do the same thing for the predicates, etc. Okay, so not important for now. Then if I wanted to say I have a database, I can always export the triples as n triples or n quads or turtle or trig, very handy. Um, if you want to make a backup of your database, then just click this button, give a file name, and it takes a few seconds and your database is backed up. In this case, um, I know there's probably a half a million uh, duplicate triples in here. If you want to get rid of them, you can just click on uh, delete duplicate statements. Yeah, and then you have to choose uh, whether you want to include the graph or not for the duplicates. For now, let's just do that. And what you see is that we deleted about half a million duplicate statements. Yeah. Um, let's see what other things we can do. Um, there's this thing called optimized repository. Let me explain that. So I could look at the at the storage reports. So one way to do here is uh, so how much how much disk space is the database taking right now? You see, it's uh, 1.7 gig. There's no free text indices. And there's no deleted, oh yeah, there's actually already deleted triples here. Um, I could look at other reports like the, uh, the triple indices. And what you see here is for, we have normally seven different indices, so you can see how much space each of them takes. You know, can see what the fragmentation level of the indices are and see here uh, that here you see all these green icons, meaning that the indices are already very healthy. So in, normally you won't touch it. But if you wanna make some changes, you can literally go to this view and say, you just wanna make sure that there's absolutely no fragmentation and you just can click on this button here. And for example, you could say, well, let's optimize the indices. And then it takes a few seconds for this small database and uh, the date and all your indices will go down to one. Oh, see, so now they're all one. You can uh, delete some of the indices. So say you don't need the indices that are sorted on G, then you can say delete them. And so now you have deleted them. Anyway, just, just to give you an idea what you can do, uh, let me go back here uh, to the repository. Okay, so we're here. Um, so let me hit F11 again, so that I'm back in the browser. Now you can always close a uh, graph by just clicking the, uh, closing the tab and you're done. Oh, here. And just to show that we created a text index and committed it, I could actually go here to or manage free text indices here. And we see that we have uh, two of them here. So let me delete this one here. And then we have the text index two that we just made here with all the predicates that we have here. And if I wanted to do a free text index query, I can always click on queries free text and look here for Aspirin. Cancer and I only want to look in text index two, search and then I get here my results. Okay, so one more thing that uh, I want to show you is uh, when you do a lot of 
work, like loading big files or doing many queries at the same time, then you want to know to what extent you um, are using your all your resources. And so we have a tool for that in here. You can always click on utilities and then look at the few the server stats. And basically, this is the output of um, uh, VM stat. Yeah, you click on the auto refresh every second. And then what you see here is to what extent you use all the CPUs in the system, how much free memory you have for anonymous and cached memory, how much IO you had. So this was when we were uh, doing the free text index, for example. Here you see all the processes that are running and finally uh, how many jobs are scheduled right now. Now, because the database isn't doing anything and the Lego graph is very, very efficient, um, this doesn't show anything right now. But again, I want to make sure that you know that this tool is available for you um, if you need to know how your resources are being used. Okay, another feature that we always get questions about is the security in Allegograph. And we're kind of proud that we are the most secure triple store uh, that is uh, commercially or non-commercially available. Uh, there's several ways you can protect your database. One is um, it's more conventional where you click on, uh, where you can make your own users. So say I'm here and I want to make a new user. I'm the user test. Let's say I want to add a user. Then I can add uh, Craig, give him a password. So now I have a new user and then I can edit. Oh, not now. And I can edit and I can make him a super user as well. Uh, so we can maybe start session so he can think like prologue and or can he evaluate arbitrary JavaScript code or other code? And can he control application? Uh, is he allowed to do uh, two-phase commits? And then, um, well, a lot more things. And then you can actually specify whether a person for each separate repository, whether you can have uh, read, read, only read, only write, read, write for a particular catalog. Say we do this one here and for the repository, that's technique. So now, Greg is allowed to do whatever he wants to do with this particular um, database. All right, so that is one way. But the other thing is where we can protect every triple on an individual basis. So we can add to every triple a um, JSON object with key value pairs. We call them attributes. Yeah, where you can specify metadata about triples and we can use that to write uh, to, to write filters that allow who can see what information. Now, the information about how to do this in the documentation index, so you can also see where you can get the documentation. For example, you want to go to the documentation index. Yeah, and some there you will find triple attributes that will specify in great detail how uh, you can add um, a JSON object to every single triple, and also how you can write uh, filters that determine who can see what. Yeah, and there's a whole language how you express those filters here. Um, so I'd rather urge you to read that, to read through that. And within here in the Lego Graph Web View, and then we go back to the repository. There's also an area called Manage Triple Attributes where you can actually specify um attributes for example i make an attribute i'll call it a security level the minimum number is uh your zero so we well let's say one and the maximum number of, of security levels is also one and you can have a number of values that are allowed one two three four five and then you can say that they're ordered and, uh, and, with, and then you can save that. Yeah, and so now I have determined an attribute for a particular triple, and then here I can write filters to determine who can see what. All right, then uh, that's it for this particular um, uh, part of the demo. And again, I urge you to go to the documentation for triple attributes.